What's up everybody? So right now I'm standing uh, right where I usually record my videos for class and I want to show you a little behind the scenes of what I'm looking at uh, as I record. So I'm going to turn the camera around right now and uh, you can see my computer where I usually record things at. See the desk? It's kind of a mess but I've got a light here, a huge light here. Uh, that's the tripod where I put everything on and then if I turn the camera around you can see that behind my computer there is this green screen which is really nothing more than some green felt uh, that I put on the wall or on the door actually closet closet is no longer accessible but that I put on the closet uh, so that I could make a virtual background uh, for whatever I wanted as I record these videos right here on my camera but I have found over the past few weeks that this process is pretty labor intensive. To make a video like this uh, for you on YouTube, but also to make it for my students, it's just been taking me a lot of time. And so I want to show you a new tool or resource that you're probably already using, but that maybe you're not using in this way that can help take your videos to the next level. Let's go. All right, so if you're a teacher, there's a pretty high likelihood that you've been recording your lectures for class and trying to find a good platform to record those things and then to also share them with your students. And I have gone through so many iterations of what I've been using. My first lesson that I sent in my class was recorded with this website called Screencast-O-Matic. It was free uh, and it was a pretty good website. It was literally recorded in the Bangkok airport, believe it or not. Uh, and I would pause the video every time someone came on the intercom to say which airline was boarding next. And so that's where I began. Over the course of time, I moved um, to recording with some different softwares, began recording with a camera, started using a green screen. So many different things changed along the way. And I went from something that was very simple, uh, but not that flexible and not that great, to be honest with you, to now I'm doing something that's very flexible and very amazing, but has really made it much more difficult to just upload videos on a week to week basis. And so today, what I want to talk to you about is using a platform that I'm sure you're already very, very familiar with uh, since we've been in quarantine for so long, and that is Zoom. So as many have already discovered, Zoom is an incredible platform and they are so gracious to make it free uh, to everyone right now. And of course there's a paid plan that has some even more features, but I want to show you how to use Zoom so that you can get the flexibility that I love as well as delivering high quality videos to your students while also having something that's free and efficient to use on a week to week basis. So let me show you exactly how to do this. If for some crazy reason you haven't downloaded Zoom yet, the first step will be to go to zoom.us slash download. Okay, let me type that in. And you are going to click on this first link, Zoom Client for Meetings, download that to your computer, get yourself a login password, and get set up. Okay? Once you get yourself logged in, you are going to click over here on this orange icon titled New Meeting, and you are just going to start a new meeting. And so, of course, right now you see the green screen that I've got set up behind me, and you are going to click Join with Computer Audio. Now, what I would recommend you do is just sit in a place in your house that's uh, pleasing to look at. Uh, could be a bedroom or wherever. Make sure you have some light in front of you uh, so that you're well lit. And um, this can be the place where you start recording your video for your students. So to do that, what you're going to do is come down here and click Record. Okay, and now you're going to be actually recording a video using Zoom. Okay, so we're recording live right now. And what I would do if I were teaching a class is I would begin with a short little introduction. So, hello guys, welcome to our style lesson. We're in week nine of class together. I'm so excited to be back with you. We're using this new platform called Zoom. So, at the end of today's video, I want you to send me a message and tell me, did you like uh, our class today and the way it was laid out? Okay, whatever kind of introduction you do for your class, but then what you're going to do is come down here when you're ready to start your PowerPoint and go to share screen. Okay, now it's going to give you several different options. Uh, there's a whiteboard option that's pretty cool, but we're going to go to the PowerPoint um, that we've got loaded for our class that week. 
Whew, so we're in it, okay? Now one tip I have for you here is to go ahead, before you ever hit record on Zoom, go ahead and have your PowerPoint in presenter view, okay? Because you don't wanna be in class by having to go and find your PowerPoint, having to you know put it on full screen, all that. Go ahead and have it in presenter view uh, so that it's ready as soon as you pull up. Click one time on your screen, and now you are in uh, presenter view on your PowerPoint. Now what I love about this is that with most other softwares, it is almost always a premium feature to be able to move yourself around the screen. But with Zoom, you can do that very easily. You can move yourself around the screen. So let's say, for example, you had some very important text down here in the bottom left-hand corner and you did not want your students to miss it. Well, you can just move yourself to the right-hand side of the screen. Very simple, just like that. Um, you can click through your PowerPoint and present your whole lesson to your students and it's going to create a file for you or video file for you that you can share with them. Now I want to show you one slide that I actually used in my class and I want to show you some pretty cool features. So if you come up to the top you can click this annotate button and this gives you a bunch of options that I recommend you play around with a little bit. Um, but one of the things that you can do is come to the draw tool, click your little line and let's say you needed to underline a word for students, um, wanted to you know, draw a picture for them. If you're a math teacher, wanted to help them solve a problem or something like that, that would be an excellent tool for you. And another tool is the text tool. So on a slide like this, uh, if you make PowerPoints, you know that it can be a little bit time consuming to animate the slide so that the words pop up perfectly and all that. Uh, but with this, you can um, click right in the slide and for example, with this one, uh, I know that the customer answer is going to be, yes, do you have any sweaters like these in red? What I can do is type that in red and really annotate my slides right there with my students as we go through the PowerPoint together. I think that is amazing. Okay, we're going to go up here to stop share. And when you click, st when you click stop share, what that is going to do is just going to stop the PowerPoint section of your video, but you are still going to be recording, okay? So you could maybe have some closing comments to your students or something like that. Tell them bye, have a great week, enjoy your holiday, enjoy your weekend, whatever. Okay, but when you're ready to sign off, you can come down here to the bottom and click stop recording, all right? So stop recording, and here's what I love. The recorded file will be converted to an MP4 when the meeting ends. All right, so it's gonna create a video file for you with your PowerPoint and you baked into one video file. Guys, that is an absolutely incredible feature. So now I'm just gonna show you a few things that can make this even better for you. So we're gonna go over um, in settings and a few things that you might wanna know. First is the recording and you're gonna wanna pick a place for this Zoom file to record so that it doesn't get lost on you. Um, so you can come over here and hit choose new location and you can save it to the desktop. What I've done is I created a new folder just called class videos and every time I make a new video it's going to record directly to that folder. Um, so I recommend you do something very similar to that. And another thing is the virtual background. Now this is something that some people like to get a little bit crazy with which might be fun in some situations uh, but maybe with class might be a little bit distracting. But if you have none, it's just, of course, going to show whatever is behind you. And that can be great if you want to kind of give the students an inside look into your house and things like that, or if you have a very aesthetically pleasing backdrop. But let's say you're in a tiny corner uh, in your house, or maybe you're a mom and you've got some laundry behind you or something like that, and you don't necessarily want the students uh, to have that intimate of a look into everything in your house, what you can do is click on one of these virtual backgrounds. Okay, so I'm just going to click on San Francisco and that's going to put me in San Francisco, the grass, the earth, okay, in the Nemo Aquarium. Okay, you can take your pick. Some of these are really cool uh, and some of them are not so cool. Now, I'll tell you that this is not like professional green screening, okay? You can see that there's a little bit of problems with my fingers and things like that. Um, but it could be a good option for you in some cases. So, uh, of course, you can download pictures off the internet. Um, you could use some of the custom green screen options that they have available. But I want to tell you about one way that you can really make this amazing, in my opinion. And that is by using the website called Canva. 
Now I use Canva for a lot of things, but it's really, really good for situations like this when you just want something very clean and very aesthetically pleasing. So I've actually already built a few templates that you could use as your Zoom backdrop. Um, and I'll actually put a link down uh, in the comments where you can go right to these templates, edit them for yourself, and uh, begin using them in your classroom. So you can use some of the templates that I have made, um, or you can come over here to the background panel and you could use a color, you could use a landscape, a gradient, a texture. There are literally so many options, but this could be a very nice, aesthetically pleasing background uh, that you can use during your Zoom calls. So let's just say that we um, go back into a video, we've applied one of those backgrounds, and let's just see how this all looks together. We're gonna hit share screen, we're gonna go to our PowerPoint, we're gonna share it, and uh, there we are. We have no background behind us that you can see. You can see us, you can see our PowerPoint. It's all in one picture. So guys, I think that is an absolutely amazing tool for teachers. I can also see this being used for students. If you had them download the app, maybe they could present their research, they could do exams together, they could do all sorts of things uh, using this Zoom platform. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you gained some valuable uh, insight from it. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe if you want to be notified every time we get a new video out like this. And nothing else, I hope that you keep on teaching with excellence, keep on loving your students, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.